Come on, praise Him in this moment. God inhabits the praises of His people. He dwells in the midst of praise. He dwells in the midst of hallelujah. He dwells. <laughs> Come on, praise Him in this moment. God inhabits the praises of His people. He dwells in the midst of praise. He dwells in the midst of hallelujah. He dwells. Hear the difference? Let's dig into that. Hello, my name is Ryan Monette. I am a post-production audio engineer for Elevation Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. And for the past several years, one of my main responsibilities on staff has been mixing every single sermon that Elevation Church has made available to watch and or listen to on our podcast, online, and TV. Now, what will I be sharing? Well. At the beginning of this video, you saw and heard a short clip of a sermon that actually transitioned from a captured front of house mix into my post-production mix, showing you the difference that can be made when you mix for broadcast. And so with that, the intent of this video is to show you how I mix sermons or live events for broadcast, but mainly, my thought process behind the decisions that I make. Now, real quick, before we start mixing, I wanna share with you the vision behind this video. This video is not intended to be a, you should fill in the blank where I'm telling you, you should do this and you should do this. No, not at all. This video is me saying, hey, this is how I fill in the blank, but mainly expressing my thought process behind the decisions that I make when mixing for broadcast. So I really hope that this video inspires you, gives you some food for thought, some fresh perspective and new ideas when you're mixing sermons or live events for broadcast. Oh, and one more thing really quickly before we dive into mixing, I know you're curious about gear. What do we use to capture, edit, and mix? So I'm gonna go through that really, really quickly just to give you context before we start mixing. We capture our sermons at our broadcast campus on a Mac Pro computer with a MADI interface running Pro Tools. And the real secret sauce to our capture are eight AR, short for audience response microphones, scattered throughout the auditorium. Now when I edit, I'm back in my office at our central location on a Mac Pro computer with Focal Solo 6 monitors and Apollo Duo audio interface. I edit and mix in Pro Tools and help with automation. I use an Avid Artist Control and Mix. <laughs> and the plugins that I primarily use are Waves, FabFilter, and Isotope. Now I breeze by all of that really quickly because the principles in this video can still apply to whatever computer, audio interface, DAW plugins that you have, whatever you have, it's great. Don't let the gear that you do or don't have cripple you. This video is not about the what, but about the how and the why. You have what it takes, now let's get mixing. All right, so what I've just opened up is a template that I have created to help me uh, streamline the process when I mix sermons. So this template is already laid out with all the tracks that I need, all the plugins that I need that I typically use, and all the settings are, for the most part, dialed in, depending on if Pastor uses a headset or handheld. Pastor will primarily use a handheld microphone, so all the plugins are set for that, but if he uses a headset, I can just make a few tweaks and whatnot, and it's pretty simple to do. But I have this template created, which really helps me streamline the process and get everything going. So we're gonna dive into this template that I've created. I'll get into how I've routed everything, how I've organized everything, the plugins that I use, and the thought process behind all of what I use. So let's get started with my process of after I open up the template. So I'm in the template here. The first thing you might notice right up here is the time code. With my playhead all the way at the beginning of the session, uh, you'll notice it's at seven hours. The reason for this is uh, at our broadcast location, our Ballantine campus, we record the time code. And normally on a Sunday, um, we'll have a run through before our 9.30 experience. So this session is created so that if anything is recorded, when I spot the clips to their, uh, to their time code where they belong in the session so everything lines up, um, that way I just don't have nine hours of empty space before the content that I'm mixing. So it just helps me keep this session tidy. One other thing you might notice if I scroll up here is I have these blank AR channels, which is where I'll put the AR that I've recorded for the weekend, that'll go there. But 
up here, these are some samples that we have pre-recorded from our last live recording uh, in the same auditorium. So it they have a very similar sound to something that uh, might happen on the weekend. And the reason for this, I can get into a little bit later, but these are not to add any false applause or, or something that isn't there. No, these are just to help supplement what is there. Sometimes I may have to automate the actual AR down if pastor is getting really loud and it's overbearing in the room. That's when I'll use these samples to kind of fill in that gap where I may have to duck the actual AR. So it just uh, supplements it and fills it in uh, in a nice way. Uh, it's just very tasteful. And I have several samples here uh, going from light applause to average applause to very aggressive applause and to even more of a roar or cheer. So I have those at my disposal to use as supplementation when I'm mixing. All right, now the first thing I'll do after I've opened this template is I will import the files, the audio files that I need to mix. Primarily this is the AR channels, pastor's mic, a mix minus and drum mix. And uh, just to go over that real quick, um, what we call mix minus is basically the web mix, what our web engineer is mixing to uh, for the live broadcast as the experience happens to be online. That is his mix minus any vocals or anything vocal loop related. That way I can have just the band underneath pastor where pastor is talking and the band is still there padding or at the end of the sermon where the sermon climb is and the band is really hyping up. I have a mix minus and a drum track because our, our drums are separate from the, the rest of the instrumentation here on the mix minus track, just because of certain routing things that we needed to do at our broadcast location for the web engineer. So these are primarily the tracks that I'm going to need. The AR, pastor, mix minus, and the drum. So I've already copied those files from our, our, our Ballantine recording computer here to my local computer. So what I like to do, if I go, if I go into Finder here, this is how I like to organize my folders and whatnot. I have a folder right here, this WE1711. That is the actual weekend, uh, this, the 11th week of 2017. Uh, and what I like to do is I like to copy all the audio files that I need into their own folder. This way, if I need to reference them for later for archival reasons, they're there in their own folder. And so what I'll do is I'll just grab all the tracks that I need and I'll just simply just drag them into the session right here. All right, so as you can see, these are in here. They're below the, this master right here. So what I'll do is I'll just take these AR channels, A1 through D2, just drag them on up to their respected AR tracks that I've created in the template, the mix minus to the mix minus track, pastor to his respected track. I'll take the what we call web drums, and those will go here on the drum track and get rid of these tracks, these empty tracks that we don't need now. Everything's in its designated spot, but the next step of the process is, you'll notice I just randomly threw them up in their tracks, and I mean, even if you take a glance here, you'll see like I've got gaps, things aren't lined up. Well, that's where, like I mentioned before, we record to time code. So if I go into spot mode here and I click, I've got all my AR groups. So if I just click them, I have the option here to spot these to the original timestamp. So that's what I'll do. I'll click this arrow right here. It'll make their start time where they were recorded on the timeline. Boop, there they go. And I'll do that with everything else. So everything here is now aligned to where it was recorded. So everything is in sync. I don't have to worry about anything, about the band being out of sync with Pastor or Pastor with the audience mics. Everything now is in sync. The next step that I'll do in the process here is also at our broadcast location while they record to help me when I mix, the recording engineer at our broadcast location will add markers such as that to parts of the sermon where there might be applause like right here or uh, you can see there might be some applause right here or right here in these AR mics that that guy right there you can hear that applause so to help me streamline my process of mixing and editing 
the recording engineer will add markers where little AR samples happen, where people laugh or clap. So the next step of the process for me is to import those markers from session data on that recording session. So I'll go into record session data, and I'll navigate to that computer and import those markers. Right now I have it already set up that I have them on a different session, so I'll just take tutorial markers, import this. What I do is I do not want to import any actual audio files, but just the markers. So that's what I'll do, I'll select that, and look at that. Those markers appear right where I need them in relation, again, because everything's locked to time code and spotted, those markers are where they need to be. So you'll see a good example here. So this L stands for laughter. You can see a little bump right here in the waveform. So if I listen, and there's some laughter. So that helps me go through when I'm editing, when I'm going from left to right here in the sermon, working my way through it, I can know where to jump uh, so I can automate and so I don't have to listen to the entire thing and take excessive amount of hours just to look for or listen to uh, spots in the sermon and, and try and hunt these down. I can already know where they're at and it really helps streamline the process. Now, the next step in the process for me, if you've ever listened to our sermons, you know that the sermons just kind of jump in right when pastor starts his message and then we end uh, as soon as he's done. But this recording, you'll notice right here, there's a lot of, a lot of nothing right there, nothing right here, but that's because this entire region is the whole experience. So I will go through and find where the sermon actually starts. Let's say I've already determined that. I'll go through and just kind of clean up my session here and, and get rid of everything that I don't need. So I'll set what we call in and out points. Again, I'm just doing this very quickly. So we'll just arbitrarily say that's what our sermon looks like. And I also get these approved with someone who is over this. And that way, when I export this and send it to our video team, uh, there's no hesitation um, between teams like where the in and out point is. This is determined by me and then approved by a supervisor saying, okay, yes, those are good in and out points. And then the mix that I export sending to video, they will base their video in and out points based off of what they get from me. So I'll add some fades to the beginning and end. That's the next part of the process. Also the next part of the process, I would go through and kind of clean up the mix minus and the drums here. So I might go through and, and solo these and, and listen like obviously here that there's no band there. So any of this bleed that we might be getting from the audience in some drum mics or we have an organ, any bleed that we might get in there, I just wanna go through and clean that up and, and see maybe where things are being played. So, so you can see that was pastor coming through. So I'll go through and clean all this stuff up. Clean up any bleed just to help make it tight. Here's some organ right there and right there, but it's also, we have some like audience bleed right there. So I'll go through things like this and just tidy it up. Now that fade may have sounded aggressive, but in the context of the mix, you won't even notice it. So I'll go through and do that, and that'll be the first steps of the process when it comes to editing. So after I've got the mix minus and the drums cleaned up, now I'll go through and actually start editing. And for me, the editing process is the lengthiest process because what I will do is I'll start at the beginning here. I'll start at the beginning and I'll just work my way to the right in the timeline and just go through these markers basically and see where I need to automate. Automation is, is the bulk of the work here. You can already at a glance, and you've probably noticed this before, see this waveform and see, okay, here's an average pastor talking level, maybe a little bit lower here, but still pretty average, same right here. But then we've got these moments right here where that dynamic range is incredibly huge and different. So the bulk of my work will be going through and automating this. What I like to do is clip gain moments like this, maybe drag a whole thing down, kind of even it out, something like this. And I'm doing this clip gaining as opposed to just relying on compressors. Before I start editing, why don't I go ahead and show you 
some of my routing here. So sh showing you where all of these tracks are going and all of these tracks are going. You may have noticed that I've got some buses here. And what, what are all of these tracks right here? Uh, what is this? What are these guys? So I'm going to go through that. And then along with that, I'm going to go through the plugins that I use before I actually start editing to give you some context here. So as I mentioned before, I have this session already laid out and already uh, set to go with the plugins that I like to use. And I'm just gonna work my way from left to right here, showing you uh, what's what, where everything's going, why I have things going in certain directions, the plugins that I use, why I use them. And again, remember, this is just how I do things. There is no right or wrong way to do this. You may see something like here on Pastor's channel and see like, okay, I got a compressor here, a compressor here, uh, another compressor here. Why, why are you using so many compressors? Why are you using so many EQ? Again, this is just something that I like to do. It's something that works for me. There is no right or wrong. It's just whatever works for you and your situation, your circumstance. And this is what I found works for me. These AR samples here, ARA through ARI, are going to a bus where they just hold all the samples as a stereo track, basically. You can see right here, their outputs are AR samp to the input of AR samp going to AR. And this AR output is a basically a master AR bus where it holds all of the AR. Okay, so, and these, the AR one through eight, those are these tracks right here. So remember, we have the actual live recording and then we have these samples up here to supplement areas where there might be applause where I have to automate down because pastor is extremely loud. Again, I can get into that later when I'm actually mixing. You'll notice too that I just have all these AR mics panned hard left and right. So this would be something that AR1, for example, would be on audience left. AR2 would be audience right. And these are positioned from front to back of the auditorium too. AR1 through uh, six are actually all on the stage. AR7 and 8 are at front of house, pointing backwards to the rear of the room with the line array behind, so out of the polar pattern range. And speaking of range and what might be picking up in the AR mics, let's go through. So these first eight AR mics, or the only eight AR mics, are going to this AR bus. You can see they're going to AR mics. AR mics is right here. And then this will be going to our AR master. I have just some slight processing here on these AR tracks. I start with just a glorified, pretty much high pass filter and then ducking out so the some of these mid range uh, areas where pastor's body might be, just ducking them out of, of those audience mics. I have the high pass set at 300 with an aggressive slope. Why? Because in your audience mics, you don't need any of that information. Uh, the majority of the content you're getting are just some of the, the room reverb, but mainly you're getting applause and laughter. None of that happens down here. <laughs> so we don't need any of that. There's no use in wasting that energy. Uh, next, I have some more EQ. I'm just notching out some areas where pastor's voice may be present in the AR mics. I'll touch on this a lot, but Pastor specifically has uh, a, a very uh, heightened sibilance range right around 4K, uh, almost a kind of whistle, if you will. And uh, so that's an area where I pay special attention to really kind of duck out there uh, in the AR mics and then later in his channel as well. Next, I'll go through, and speaking of sibilance, I'll DS just a hair on these AR mics where Pastor's S's might poke through just a little bit excessively. It's very subtle. Um, next, I also have a limiter. This is just to protect me from clipping, but I use it mainly as a gain stage here to kind of to bump up this these AR mics to a level that blends well with Pastor's mic. Now, we, we like going for a live sound. I always like to have the listener feel like they are immersed in the experience. So for me, that involves having the listener feel like they're in the room. And if, if I had the AR mics very low and the majority of the content that you heard was just Pastor's voice, 
it, it, it would sound very isolated and, and not immersive. It, it, it would kind of remove you. So for me, blending in the AR so that I get this natural room reverb really helps immerse you in the experience, making you feel like you're there. Okay, so next, all of these AR go to this AR master right here where I have the Wave Center plugin and a stereo imager. This is to, in the center, I just kind of duck out the center here to make space uh, in the stereo spectrum for Pastor's vocal to be just right. I saved the center for Pastor's vocal. You can see here on his channel and on his auxiliary channel, I have it panned straight up the middle. That's just for the stereo spectrum to help Pastor poke through the middle and have everything else kind of just like wrapped around the sides uh, and save that energy for pastor for the middle and everything else elsewhere. So stereo imager, I just widened that, that audience um, spectrum just a little bit, nothing crazy. Again, another limiter just for precaution in case anything is getting close to zero. Uh, it, it doesn't often, but it's just there just as a precaution. Okay, you'll notice here too, on a couple of these tracks such as AR All, Sermon, and Band, I have here in the comments stem. What we like to do because a lot of our, our content gets used for videos, but not only just a sermon podcast or TV show, we use sermon clips uh, in other sorts of videos as well. Sometimes we may have a video that uh, uses sermon content uh, in an area where a pastor is really loud and there's a band behind him, uh, but in the video, we have a music track. And if we just use the stereo mix of the sermon, uh, it'll have the band in it and that will clash with the, the background music of whatever video is being produced. So we like to export stems uh, when I, when I export the mix, I export stems as well. That's a feature you can do in Pro Tools where you export your mix and then you can also mix, uh, export the certain outputs. So what I do is, um, is I have things routed to these, to these tracks, these buses, and when I export, I will export uh, from their inputs. So AR, um, Sermon, and band. When I export from the monitor left and right, the stereo mix, I'll also include uh, these three as well. So that way uh, our, our video editors have options if they do end up editing some video with some sermon content where there might be something that they just want pastor's mic, but it's treated as well. Instead of just grabbing the raw audio, it's already treated, already mixed, Yes, so that, that is the reasoning behind that. That is how I have everything routed. And uh, while I'm at it, you'll notice these three tracks are going to what I call the pre-mix. This is basically where I just do some, some somewhat mastering-ish type of processing last minute before I just go to the master fader. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's just, it's just a pre-master basically. All right, let's move into pastor. We'll spend some time here. The first thing I, I usually do is just start off with a glorified high pass filter. Nothing too high. It's not a vocal in a mix with a band or a song, so I don't have it set too high because this is spoken audio. This is mainly just dialogue and audience mics. So I don't want to suck out too much of the low end energy. We like to have a nice full sound for Pastor's voice. So that's the reasoning behind that. Again, do whatever is required with your mix. This is just what I do for our purposes. Now next, I'll compress. Nothing too crazy here, a middle attack, nothing too fast or too slow. The release is very fast though, so you don't hear it letting go. A note with any like waves, analog type plugins. Unless you're mixing music and it's a style you're going for, I will typically always turn the analog feature off because that just produces unnecessary noise, some line noise or hiss. And I don't really want that in this type of, of scenario. Next part of the process for me is some EQ. Again, just notching out some of those areas that are undesirable. Moving on down, I'll do some more compression. That's this guy right here. Again, not a crazy fast attack, but a fast release. Uh, I do add some makeup gain here just to just to bring it up just a hair, nothing crazy. Um, you'll see it's, it's what, 4 dB? Yeah, nothing crazy. And speaking of 4 dB, 
I had this threshold set so that at its loudest, I'm not compressing more than four dB. Uh, it's very subtle compression. The most amount of compression will come from this first compressor, but as I'm clip gaining, I won't allow more than minus 10 dB of compression. That's the reasoning for the clip gaining. So you'll notice in an area like this, where it's really loud. On the cross, that's where my second guessings and second givings. That guy's going crazy. But if you look over here where I already did some clip gaining. I need somebody who travels six hours or more to know. So that helps it for me sound a little bit more true and you're not relying solely on a compressor. Uh, you have more control on what you wanna do. So an area like this, where it, this. So I might do something like, like this, where it's more gradual, you don't hear it coming. It does like this. Did you see the difference there? So that's, that's what I'll spend the majority of my time, again, going through this entire sermon, clip gaining pastor's track. And then I'll get into it later, but along with that, I'll go through and automate the AR as well and how I do that. So now going back to our mix page, just working our way down. Again, I will DS Pastor because he does have that somewhat harsh sibilance. I love the FabFilter Pro DS. It is a very great DSer plugin. Next, I'll use a multiband compressor to hone in on some certain areas uh, and compress them a little bit differently. You'll notice I have somewhat of a shape here based off of this yellow line. I do like to boost this low end just a hair. One and a half dB is nothing, like you can hardly hear that. But for me, it helps kind of boost up just a little bit of that like low body energy. We like to have pastor's voice sounding very full. So this kind of helps with that. But I'm also taming it with this compressor here. Die, they thought this is it, but heaven is watching and saying- no. So you can see how I'm compressing here uh, with a somewhat fast but mild attack. Um, just taming it so it's not all excessively just low-end woofiness. And I'll do that specifically for each band as well. Then I also have these narrower bands where I'll hone in on certain areas and treat them specifically. So I love the multiband compressor. I love the C6. Uh, I'll use that for something else later on that I can get into. Right here, you'll notice this one has a side chain on it. Ooh, what is that? I'll get into that here in a minute. We're going my way through. I love the Waves Noise Suppressor. This is to help in areas such as where there might be gaps, like right here, where nothing's happening but some AR. But what I like to do is select this area right here where it might be quiet. I might solo pastor out here and just kind of play it and loop it. And this is where I will kind of adjust these settings right here so that these thresholds for these certain frequencies kind of line up to with the noise floor. So this is just some general like hiss, some line noise, maybe some air in the auditorium. I'll kind of tweak that. And then for me, I'll find an area where a pastor may be at his quietest and play that. And that's where I'll adjust and the cross is confusing this threshold. Because it's not supposed to end like this. So that it opens up. And the cross is confusing because so that it opens up where pastor may be at his quietest, so we're not missing any content. Uh, I usually have just a, this smoothing control here. I have it right in the middle just to help. Um, it, it's not fast, it's not quick, but it's not super slow. It's right in the middle. That's just the way that I like to have it set. Again, this is just how I do things, but I'm letting you know the reasoning behind it. So I'll use this noise suppressor to just clean up some, just a little bit of that hiss. I went back to our mix window, working our way down, just some more EQ again, just getting maybe a little bit more specific. I love the Pro-Q2 by FabFilter. Again, just more EQ notches here and there. You'll notice all of my EQ is subtractive. This is very intentional. I don't like to add anything with the EQ with the exception of that C6 where I'm added just a hair on the low end, but all of my EQing is all subtractive. I'm just getting rid of the information that I don't want that is harsh. Um, I'm just getting rid of it. <laughs> Next, I'll have a limiter. This is where I might uh, bring pastor up just a little bit, 6 dB. This'll be a little bit more important when I get into loudness. 
that is when we start to get into this loudness meter here. I'll get into that here in a moment. Working my way to the right, I have Pastor going to a bus. Uh, I have this pan just straight up the middle. It is a it is a stereo track, but I'm treating it as mono. Here's where I might have some more processings. Again, that 4K range is, is, is very harsh, so I'll treat it just a hair more. I can get a little OCD and go down a rabbit trail of frequencies that I hear that stand out to me. And at a certain point, I just need to, to let go and say, okay, this sounds, it sounds great. But then I might hear one thing and then just, oh gosh, chase it down the rabbit trail. Some very slight compression, again, not a fast, super fast attack, hardly any, any makeup gain, two dB at most. This is hardly doing anything. It's very subtle. The key is subtlety here. Again, we're not relying on our compressors uh, so much as we are clip gaining these louder areas. Kind of averaging out our level here so that we're not relying solely on the compressor. It gives it a more natural sound for me. Now, I've got some buses here. I'm sending to bus seven, which is going to a side chain here in the band. I can get into that uh, when we get to that track. Uh, but I'm also sending to a verb. I'm actually sending to two reverbs here. So again, like I talked about earlier, I do want the listener to feel immersed in the experience. So, for me, that is adding just a hair. You'll, you'll notice like this one I have down 7 dB, this one down 2 dB. They're very subtle, but it's to just bridge some of those gaps where maybe some of the noise suppression might be taking something out of passer's mic or when I have to automate our AR mics down in louder moments such as, such as here. I may have to automate this AR down because you can see a lot of pastor's content in our audience mics. So I might have to automate this track down. And with that, you'll you notice applause right here. But if I have it down right here, it's not gonna sound natural. So again, that is where those AR samples come into place. Oh gosh. You know, I might use something like uh, like this guy right here. Kind of put him in this gap. Fill the gap. Do it subtly so, so it blends nicely. Again, I'm, I'm just rushing through this, but to give you a, a general idea. But again, so that just adds AR, but this dip right here removes some of that room reverb that natural reverb. So I kind of make it up here with these two guys. We have two different reverbs that I like. This one's more of a arena type vibe where it's got some lower frequency content. Um, and I do kind of dip some of that out, but it gives it a nice full reverb with a very long tail. Much like I did with our AR, I'm also widening it the same amount so that it blends well with our AR mics, the stereo spectrum. I've got uh, this stereo imager on both of these reverbs. Uh, moving on to this next reverb, this reverb right here is more true to the actual sound of our auditorium. It's, it's a little bit shorter, you can see, than this first one. So it sounds a little bit more true to the actual room reverb that we're recording. And this does help with areas like this where it's filling in kind of those gaps where I may be dipping the AR down. Moving on next is the Sermon Master Bus. Again, just like this AR Master Bus, this is to help with exporting stems. I have a limiter here just as safety just as insurance for the peace of mind. Next, we have our mix minus and the, the drum mix here, which are these two guys that I showed you earlier. You can see them right there. Uh, I'm not doing anything on those because I have them going to this band, band Z, because that's hip, right? Um, <laughs> that was lame, I'm sorry. Uh, to this band bus. And um, the reason why I have, I'm not taking a stem off this band bus is because I'm doing so much processing on it. And when I take a stem for a bus, I'm taking the input, every, everything that's going. So I need this band to go to a separate track where there's not any processing. Because if I were to take a stem of this track, 
it would be from this endpoint because if I sent, if I didn't have this master bus for the band, if I took the, this output, this output would be the premix and then it would be this, including all of this stuff going into the premix. Does that make sense? I hope so. So that is why I had the routing the way it is because if I took this input, I would be missing all of this processing that I'm doing here on these two mix minus tracks. I have some subtle EQ just dipping this range where Pastor's body might be so it doesn't clash with the band. I'm doing somewhat of a subtle mastering to the band, nothing too aggressive, maybe just dipping this range here in the band, adding a little bit of air here, nothing huge with this like, look, uh, a, a dB and a half of, of gain reduction possible. So nothing crazy, very subtle. This attack time is very slow. So again, very subtle. I do some bus compression, again, very subtle. Uh, slow attack, automatic release. I do add some makeup gain here. Nothing crazy, no more than 4 dB. And I'm not compressing anything more than 4 dB. It's very subtle compression. Next, I like to use Isotope Final Mix, RX Final Mix. This helps as the preset says, space for dialogue. So right here, it'll, it won't just notch out like an EQ, but it'll compress the, this area of the mix minus in this range where dialogue might be present. So that way Pastor can sit in this frequency spectrum and the band can live nice and full down here where Pastor's uh, voice won't be anything below 100 and add some air to maybe like the cymbals or anything up there. Now, next, we can get into this C6 sidechain. This is what I was talking to earlier about this bus right here that's coming from Pastor's track, his dialogue bus. You'll notice here something very different between this C6 and this C6. It's a little bit more specific with just these two specific ranges. And you'll notice right here at the bottom, this setting right here next to sidechain is set to external. If you look right here, this key input is set to bus seven. So the content sending out of this bus on pastor's track is triggering this multiband compressor in these two bands, which are set to external looking at this key input. So basically this multiband on my mix minus my band here, this will compress in these ranges where pastor's voice is a little bit present, much like what this final mix is doing, except it is triggered by Pastor's voice. So only when Pastor Come is talking. On, 60 seconds of praise for the cross. That's a little excessive because I have yet to clip gain this area. But you can see maybe an area where the band's not playing. Paul said if there's any comfort from being united with Christ, what, what she's drawing across. How that is compressing based off of what Pastor is doing. So this this is a, a way and a trick for me that I can get into in another tutorial where I teach how I like to mix voiceover with a music bed. Uh, this is a little trick that I use to notch out areas in the music bed or backing track where the vocal may be present, but it's not EQing it out so it's out permanently. It's only out when the dialogue is happening. It's a little trick I like to do and generally I'll have a, a very fast attack and, and fast release so we don't hear it happening. So that is what that is. And again, that is right here on our band master. Next, I like to do just what I did for this AR track right here. I like to use the center plugin to dip out no more than three and a half dB from the center. Maybe put some low end energy just a hair out on the side. Same with the highs and punch. Just tuck it out to the sides so that we save the center content for Pastor's actual dialogue and we can send everything to the side. So we have this nice wide spectrum, but nothing's clashing. And again, I'll use the stereo, the S1 imager. This is even more subtle than the AR at 1.15, just to widen it just a hair. Next, I'll have this limiter not doing much at all. Maybe just honing this in so that it blends well with where Pastor's dialogue is sitting at. And again, just this out ceiling at minus 0.1, just as insurance so nothing clips. 
nothing's hitting the red, and then that is going to this band master here, which is what I use for the stem, and that is going to our premix, to where I am doing some somewhat mastering to the overall mix. This EQ right here on the overall mix, I have my mix routed to not only my Focal speakers here in my office, but I also can switch it so that I listen to my mix on a TV because I know that eventually this sermon will find its way on TV. And because of that, I like to hear it from a TV, what the, the viewers will be hearing it on typically. So I have this routed to the TV and these are some of those areas that might poke out on just a generic TV speaker set. So I'll just gradually notch those out. Look at a, a dB and a half, nothing crazy. Again, everything on this premix track right here is going to be very subtle. This compression right here, the threshold is super low. It's, it's maybe not even compressing more than two or three dB. No makeup gain, uh, very subtle attack, an automatic release. And again, just like every analog type plugin, I have the analog off to get rid of any of that gear noise that it's trying to simulate. All right, now I can get into this WLM meter, which is on Pastor's sermon as well. Like I just mentioned, I'm gonna bring this down right now. This is the waves loudness meter. As I just mentioned, I know that this sermon will eventually find its way on TV. And if you've ever mixed for TV, you will know that TV has very strict loudness regulations. Not level, not, not dB, but loudness. Perceived loudness is very different than dBFS, which is what I'm metering at right here, but this is perceived loudness, very different. So I will have these up. You notice I brought it down from another screen. I have another screen open to where I can always monitor these things because I know that this mix will eventually find its way on TV. So I typically want to mix to where my overall loudness is somewhat close to the, the specifications that are needed for TV, which is generally a long term of minus 24 LKFS. He really is who he says he is. So you can see. How can he be? That's right around to die. that area. You can see in the short, short term, that's right around that area. The road when the one who's so you can see I'm averaging right beside them. approximately where I need to it. be at this minus 24 so like that I mentioned. See, there's a green check. The wrong. So I just like to keep an eye on that while I'm mixing. Now, for this actual sermon mix, while I am keeping an eye on it, I will not be crazy strict because I know when I mix TV, I'll have a separate session for that. And that's where I can be a little bit more strict. But because I know this is going to go on YouTube and an audio podcast or video podcast as well, uh, I am okay with it being a little bit more dynamic for those purposes because for YouTube or an audio podcast, you are okay with being close to zero dBFS um, and, and getting away with it and it's sounding great. But this is also to help me just like have an idea and see where my average loudness is. You know, it might be very different um, at a moment like this as opposed to a moment like this. Bleed in the cross of Jesus. I mean, you can see that. Again, I haven't clip gained or automated this at all yet. So again, that's just the general idea behind what this plugin is doing for me, just so I can have a general idea of where my loudness is sitting at. So it can be approximately in a close range to when I eventually do touch this up for TV in a separate session. The last two things here on this premix are an L2 where I am because of this loudness meter right here, uh, the, the, the average loudness around that minus 24 range won't have, you'll see here if I look at this band. Um, so this premix is after this limiter. And you'll notice here that the band, the level there is quite lower than it is here. Um, so this band is feeding this loudness meter before it's going into this limiter. And you can see it's pretty close to the, the, this average for TV. 
But because this is going to be used online and for a podcast, I do want to have my overall mix. If I were to unsolo this, maybe it's time for me to tell you that you're. I do want to have this close to zero dBFS. And to do that, I will need to bring it up a little bit, usually around 7 dB. Uh, is what I've found in, in these mixes. So I'll use this, this L2 to not only be a final like protection limiter, but also gain it up so that I'm a little closer to this target range for mixing for web. And then finally, I have another final mix. Now, I kind of tweaked a template that they had called laptop. Again, I'm, I'm, I, I know that a lot of people are going to be listening to this uh, on a laptop, on a, on a computer, or also on uh, iPhone or iPod earbuds. And so because of that specific frequency range, right in this middle here might be a little harsh, much like it was when I tweaked this EQ for the TV. So this final mix here is doing a similar thing to that EQ, but again, just compressing those areas as opposed to notching it out like an EQ. I have it set subtly uh, so that it's not too crazy. And then I add a hair of makeup gain where it is notching those out. And then this again is a very, very final limiter so that nothing will peak over half a dB. From there, the premix is done and it's just going to our, our master. This L2 is again, more insurance because I'm paranoid. <laughs> so that is how everything is laid out so that you know. Now I can get to editing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, as I, I've already kind of expressed with you how I go through from left to right and I'll work my way through and clip gain pastor and I'll automate the AR. I like to use the Avid artist control and artist mix, mainly for automating, specifically automating AR. As I did here, I don't like to add nodes by hand and automate AR because that'll sound a little bit artificial. What I like to do is if I go into my U control settings here, I can assign this fader specifically for this AR track. So if I go back now, to Pro Tools, this AR track will be controlled by this artist mix right here. And the fader that I assigned it to, if you notice my layout here, I'm, I'm using my mouse with my right hand here. That's this fader right here, right next to my hand. So I can move very quick. I'll go through edit and if I'm on a spot like this and want to just go through and um, automate real quick, I can just grab this fader. But I've been looking at Luke 24, these two people. And you can see how it automated. So I'll go through a moment. Let's find a, a spot of applause right here where pastor is pretty average. This will be kind of what it looks like, what I'm doing. I'll be going through. Because there was something that they got grab from this you in fader the moment here. they don't get from you. Write it up just like that. Gradually bring it down. Really so you can see there, that's what I've done to make it sound a little bit more natural as opposed to something like this, where it's, uh, it just wouldn't feel right. Again, the key here to mixing is subtlety and I don't want to take you out of the experience. So I don't want anything to catch your ear in a bad way, anything that's jarring. So I do things very subtly and I like to do it by hand, by touch, by feel, to give it that intimate uh, and personal feeling to it. So here's what our session looks like right now. I'm gonna cut, and then we're gonna come back to what the session will look like when I'm done mixing and editing. Three hours later. All right, and here we are with a completed sermon, edit, and mix. You'll notice, as I mentioned, I worked my way through from left to right, beginning to end of the sermon, automating pastor's clip gain. I did that by hand, by creating little nodes here and dragging them down in the, the heightened areas in ways that sound natural. Again, I just tamed everything a little bit so it wasn't too excessive and so the compressor wasn't working too hard. I automated the AR up in areas where God is. people may say amen or clap or laugh. It's in Hebrew. <laughs> and These little snippets right here are the organ that I was talking about. And all my doubts and all my failures happen. 
that was very subtle. Let me find something here. Here we go. Of legions of angels. So just that little organ hit. And remember how I mentioned that fade might have sounded aggressive by itself? But in context, of legions of angels, but hung there. it just blends right in so nice. You can hear great stereo imaging here with the AR. Matt and Bob. Well, what about Bob? If Bob left the cross, reach out to John. There's a John at your cross. And one thing I'd like to touch on real quick is that subtlety that I mentioned. So you'll notice that I have these AR samples here supplementing where I had to dip the AR down. But if I mute this AR, if I let this play and I'll toggle the mute for this AR, you'll hear just how subtle it is. I'm not relying on these samples. I'm just using it to, to fill in those little gaps. Oh. Well, what about Bob? If Bob left the cross, reach out to John. There's a John at your cross. I feel something happening in your heart right now. That just sets you- So it's subtle. It can be more subtle in some areas and more helpful in some areas where pastors really digging into it. And because I have the AR so low in, in this bus, I need to make up for it a little bit up here. Do what God called you to do. Do you believe that? Can you receive this? This is a hard say. This is the kind of stuff Jesus would- So you could hear the natural AR, but then this kind of filled in those gaps to make it feel a little bit more lively and full where I had to duck it out. So again, that's the purpose behind these samples. I'm not adding them anywhere where there isn't applause. I'm not making you think people are getting hyper crazy when they're not. No, it's just supplementing what's already there. And again, the way I automated the AR is by hand, by the fader, by the artist mix. There's plenty of fader controllers that you can buy for cheap that are just one fader. I like to do it, but I mean, you don't even have to do it this way. You can, you can, you can drag this guy in right here. And if you're playing, you can, you can grab the fader. On what happened on the cross. And write I it that way to give it that feel. See what I mean? See, I just did that right there. So again, I like to just do it by touch. It makes it feel great. I've got the band here mixed in with Pastor. You can see how far I have everything dipped in the AR and with Pastor. So I have these AR samples here to, to blend it. Uh, let's take a listen to this spot. Complete me, I am complete in the cross of Jesus Christ where he bled is still flowing today and it's flowing through me. Come on, give him 60 seconds of praise for the cross. For the cross. At the cross. I got it at the cross. So there you can hear a lot of what I talked about in practice. I'll even show you what this side chain's doing right here in this moment. Me, I am complete in the cross of Jesus Christ. You can't even hear the band ducking in this moment, but it's helping Pastor pop just a little bit. And then lastly, before I wrap this up, again, I just want to express the importance of when I'm mixing, of just referencing a loudness meter. Again, I don't make myself stick to it so strictly when I'm mixing initially this sermon because I know it's gonna go on, again, online and podcast and all of those platforms. But for TV, I wanna have it generally close enough. A couple years ago with my dad, and somebody gave me good advice. They said, don't tell a lot of people what you're going through. So again, I'm not allowing myself to be too strict, but you can see generally how it's right around this average level. And I can't stress the importance of this enough. Let me give you a scenario why. So before I was on staff at Elevation, I would listen to the podcast uh, in my car as I was driving to work. And there would be moments where pastors whispering and I'd have to turn the, the, the level up on my car radio, but then he'd start screaming and then I'd have to turn it down. And that pulled me out of the experience. That distracted me because now I was distracted with where my radio knob was at. It was pulling me out of something that I could have gotten from this sermon that I may have missed because I was thinking about a knob. Now imagine the, 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 the single mother who's at home taking care of her kid who may have this on 
TV while she's doing the dishes or something like that. If there's a moment where a pastor's quiet or something, she may miss something life-changing. So for me, the importance of where levels are and the perceived loudness is crucial because especially in sermon content, there could be something so minute that could be so life-changing that if you miss because you're distracted, it, it can make a world of difference. So that is the importance on why I, I really like to pay attention to loudness. All right, and lastly now, since we are done editing, we are done mixing, this is good to go, all we have to do is export. So I'll select a region that's complete. What I like to do is give myself just a little bit of space before and a little bit of space after. Just some breathing room, some handles here. Now, when I export, you'll see in my template, I basically have these already set to go, but you can, you can always add more or whatever. But you'll notice I have this bounce source. I have my master, my stereo master. I have that sermon stem, that AR stem, and the band stem. So those are all good to go once I export. I just need to label it, choose where I wanna bounce. It's already going to this bounces folder that I've created. We like to export always in Wave 2448, the video standard, because this will be used for video. And then all, all I have to do is bounce. I'm okay with offline bounce. It's still gonna take a while because it's a long sermon and there's a lot of processing. But when I export, I will have that stereo final mix and all of these stems ready to go. All right, that'll about do it. Thank you so much for watching. Now remember, this video is not a how you should video, but I really hope that you seeing my thought processes behind the decisions that I make has inspired you and gave you new approaches to mixing sermons or live events or broadcast. Now, you're done. Stop watching me, get out there, start mixing, and take care. Bye.